Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss, is a thousand polling rate worth it for the average user or viewer or anybody who's casually gaming? Let's answer this honestly and quickly. I was using the Viper V3 Pro. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't used a Razer product in quite some time. This is the first time I used one because they announced the 8,000 polling rate with their enhanced little, uh, little dongle here. And so I decided to make a video on it and really test it out. So I've been using it for a little while now. And after playing a lot of Apex, so using a couple streams, I wanted to give my thoughts. So honest answer, no, I don't think that it's actually worth it for an average user or consumer, but if you love the shape and it feels comfortable, then 8,000 polling rate is a nice bell and whistle to have on a mouse. I think it's fantastic to have if you have the option available for you, but I don't think you should necessarily chase it. So that's what we're gonna discuss today. I'm gonna discuss the pros and cons now that I've already given you the answer and I'm gonna explain why. Remember, I'm just a gamer. I'm not a tech YouTuber. I, yeah, and, and hopefully my findings can help you make an informed decision. So let's discuss why. So I've actually tested this on 10 different mouse pads. I'm gonna overlay them here. I also used them on glass surfaces, different surfaces. And I really wanna discuss as well the different mice that I compared with. I mean, I have my G303, which I use the most. I had the Superlight 2 which is 2,000 polling rate and 4,000 polling rate, which I kind of also rocked as well. And then of course our 8,000 polling rate best. I, honestly, there's nothing wrong to say about this mouse at all. The, the Viper is a uh, pretty strong addition and there's it's a great shape. It, yeah, it's just, it, it's a solid mouse, which is why we're gonna kind of discuss shape in a little bit as well. Let's focus more on the 8,000 polling rate. All right, you know, the interesting part, when it came to 8,000 polling rate, what I found really interesting is that you have to disable overlays, Steam overlays, EA overlays, anything like that. Otherwise, you're gonna experience lag and increase stuttering and major problems. So any game like that, not all games are optimized for 8,000 polling rate and overlays tend to cause a lot of problems with that. I realize that. So me, if you have the EA app overlay on, I trust me, it's this is gonna be the biggest stutter fest ever. And this may vary depending on games because some games have native support for this. Well, Others have upgraded to support for it and then others just flat out don't work with it at all. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing up when it comes to 8,000 polling rate, Windows 11 is pretty much necessary to run one of these things. If you don't, then you're probably gonna struggle immensely with that as well, with stuttering. And then third, what fixed these problems as well is going up to the, the BIOS and overclocking the CPU. CPU seem to be a, a bottleneck in certain areas, overclocking tend to fix some of that stuttering that I was experiencing in Apex Legends and pretty much uh, solve that problem. So there we go, that, that fixed that as well. So after all this is said and done and you have this amazing mouse, so why? what are even the benefits? Well, realistically, the science behind it is that there's more being picked up, more updates that are happening over to your computer. If there's more updates, then you're gonna get a more responsive feel. I will say the benefits is that it does feel a little more responsive. It's really hard, to, you have to be looking for it, especially when you're here at the moment, I don't know if you're necessarily gonna find it. And it's just refreshing a lot more, which is why we talked about the CPU being kind of the bottleneck, because you sometimes, depending on the game and how it's coded, you may experience some frame loss because it is trying to update so much. And that's just, I think there's more of a, a clash, like a collision happening rather than, because the, the game just isn't programmed for that many updates to happen. Now, one thing I'll mention is I didn't notice the, uh, the polling rate difference until I got a 540 hertz monitor. Uh, that's whenever I noticed 4,000 polling rate difference and above. Now, here's the, the, I guess, the more interesting thing. When I was using a 360 hertz monitor, it, it, it's just it, it's just a, f a feel. It feels a little more floaty. It feels a, a lot more alive. It's almost like going from 500 to 1,000 polling. Your brain adjusts to it and you can make some changes. And if, it, if you don't like that feel, then you, you start making changes. So with that brain adjustment to that, it becomes almost, in my opinion, a preference. So we're gonna talk about each of these mice and their shape and then all it becoming overall a preference. Cause then if we've got the Logitech at 2000 polling rate versus 4000 polling rate, you start asking the question, why? Cause I mean, the what biggest thing that you're also gonna suffer from here is that you're gonna suffer battery life. Like I, I believe the Razer lasts for about 17 hours on 8k versus if you drop it then it has increased battery life and that's pretty solved by the end of the day but just make sure that you plug it in you know, take it off the dongle and then just plug in the mouse just remember to do that every single day and you're you're pretty much golden you're pretty much set so nothing to worry about there 
Now, the interesting thing as well, whenever you start doing this, is that with your brain adjusting so quickly to the changes, you, you the benefits kind of go away, even at a higher refresh rate. Like that alive responsive field, you can also just adjust and go back down to a thousand polling rate and then go for more stability if that's what you're looking for, or just the overall shape, which is interesting because after all using all these mice, I'm essentially going back to the G303 just because, and I know AIM enthusiasts are going to laugh at me for using this mouse, but I really do just enjoy its shape and it feels really comfortable, which is, I'm going to do a different video on that overall, but it's uh, just my preference. And this is where we talk about surfaces as a whole. Let's say you don't want to have that floatiness feel because you're on a glass pad already and you say, okay, well, I'm going to pair this with, let's say a cloth pad. Well, then if you do that, then what's the point of 8,000 polling rate if then if you're going to use something to circumvent the overall feel that you're looking for, right? Let's say it feels more lively and you're getting that responsiveness, but then you go with the GSR, for example, which is a really slow mouse pad versus, let's say, a glass pad, then you might as well just go back to a heavier mouse and then use those variables to get that feel that you're looking for. I think more or less what I started realizing is that it became shape, feel, and then comfort overall that kind of got the overall dub that really worked overall. So if you have something that works for you currently and anything within the last couple of years, even just a regular standard G Pro, I don't necessarily think you're going to be too out of the loop. Like 2000 polling rate, sure, it, it's nice. And then 4K, it's okay. But the shape at the end of the day is what really works. So that's why I also wanted to compare the shape. And you look at how safe the shape is on the V3 Pro here. And you compare it to the G Pro, it's, it, I mean, they're, it's not the, the same, same, keep that in mind, but there is a similarity. Like this, this just hangs a little over a bit more. But then, of course, if you compare it to something so egregious and different, such as a G303, and you kind of understand more or less what I'm talking about when it comes to shape preference, especially depending on your grip style. I think your grip style is going to make a bigger difference with a shape that feels a lot more comfortable compared to other mice. And if you like the shape, then that will make a whole lot of sense. But if you don't like the shape and, it, and maybe the mouse is too big, too small, depending on what you're looking for, that seems to be the overall consensus. It seems like what my biggest struggle, and this is just me closing on personal thoughts in the industry, is not every mouse has 8,000 or 4,000 polling rate. And the one that I didn't even get to mention here, I have in the back, I have been, I also been trying Asus and I've been also been trying, I tried the Lamzu 4K as well. And I didn't make any videos on them because I didn't really notice a big difference, but it took me upgrading hardware and it took really pushing the boundaries to really see a difference. And even when I saw one, I really questioned if it was really worth it. So this is again, a video just giving my honest thoughts that upgrading, depending on where you're coming from. If you have a mouse that's really old, and is it a little beat up and you're looking just to make an upgrade, then sure, this makes sense. Or even like the super light too. Yeah, go for it. But if you have something like going from a, an average mouse from like three or four years ago to an upgraded one, I don't know if the average consumer will see a benefit. Maybe if you're a pro player, sure, that'll make the biggest difference overall. But otherwise, I think, you know, you go with what works for you and what's safe. And I have made this mistake time and time again by trying all kinds of different mice from the Lamzu to the Asus to from Logitech to Razer now. And I I know I don't make a whole lot of videos on them, but I'm hoping that this will give you some insight that I think your fundamentals and how you grip the mouse and how you decide to hold it, whether it is a palm grip, whether it's a fingertip grip, or whether you claw it, then you make an informed decision. Is that shape going to be comfortable for you or is it not going to work? And one thing I notice as you kind of go up at high, higher polling rate that these shapes are, are pretty safe. So, I mean, I guess there's not a whole lot to lose there, but like I said, the other things that kind of made it feel a lot more responsive. I would say like if you're on a 120 hertz monitor, then you going 8K, I mean, you could probably spend the money on getting a better monitor. And I think you'll notice a bigger difference. It, you just have to focus on every bit of latency. And once you get all that down, you start to question after putting all that money in, does it make that big of a difference? And I, I, I think I, I'm going to do a follow-up video talking about shape and the value of shape and the bigger difference that it does make overall. And why I'm essentially making the decisions that I do with the mice that I'm using. So hopefully you guys found this insightful. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. I apologize if a little ranty. I got the answer out there as fast as humanly possible. But at the end of the day, um, I have my setup that I'm using uh, and any aim enthusiast can kind of laugh at me. But at the end of the day, I think shape is what really matters most. And all these mice are generally around, I mean, they're kind of expensive these days, like every single one of them. And it's hard to experiment with what shape really works. But like I said, 
if it, the shape is awesome and it's got the bells and whistles of what you're looking for, then you'll know what mouse to use. Otherwise, then uh, I guess take it from me and then don't fix it if it's not broken for now. For now, until you can upgrade other specs and stuff on your computer. And if you got the, the money to kind of throw around and that shape is just your favorite shape in the whole wide world, then it makes sense to make the jump. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.